This next control actually creates the entire rest of your risk management strategy. So when you look at all of the functions, the categories, and then the subcategory controls, all 108 of them, they really come back to your organization's ability to articulate its risk tolerance, its risk appetite, and it must be in line with the organization's objectives and its mission. And it's something that I don't believe enough people within security and IT and risk management are doing to truly tie cybersecurity risks to the overall objective of the organization. IDBE3, business environment number three, outlines that the priorities for the organizational mission, objectives, and activities are established and communicated. The second part right here is actually from the overarching uh, category, uh, just uh, business environment as a whole. So this is the information for actually all of these uh, subcategory controls. This is the information used to inform the cybersecurity roles, the responsibilities, and the risk management decisions. What's important here, and we've done this, I've, I've done this in other videos that you can go back and look at, but if you do not have your risk tolerance within an organization clearly established as far as what that is, where anything above this tolerance line, right, is something that we do not accept. Anything below the tolerance line really is something that we would accept. So say you're doing it off of revenue and you're willing to lose X amount of dollars. Well, if your risk that is being presented is X minus one on the dollars, then it's an acceptable risk. But because you've established this line, if it is above that and it's X plus one, then it is an unacceptable risk and you need to be able to address it. And you need to be able to address it through either, you know, standard risk management uh, practices. You're going to actually reassess your risk tolerance and it might be something you end up accepting. It might be something that you transfer with um, insurance. It might be um, something that you try to avoid with um, moving around your capabilities or just maybe getting out of a market, but I, I doubt it. Or it's the one where you want to remediate and or mitigate whatever that risk is. These are your four things that you want to be going to when you address have to address something that's here. Too often, we see organizations just move things into what I unfortunately call the ignore bucket. This is where organizations are looking at what they have and choose to not make a decision about the risk that's presented to them. And that's just not uh, really a plausible or an appropriate fifth method within risk management. Back to the control. If the organization has established what their overall mission is within, an, with, within the company or the org, that should help then drive decisions within the organization to be able to determine either revenue values or product values or brand that are important to the overall org within you know, the risk management practices, however it's set up. It could, it could literally just be a single person. Maybe it's a co-founder uh, or just a founder that is making this decision. Maybe it's a CEO. Maybe it actually is a board that is doing this. Whatever it is, uh, and whoever is making that decision, it needs to be made, it needs to be established, it needs to be then communicated into the organization as a whole so that these types of decisions can be made later on. If you don't do this practice, if you do not look and really address this control, you will continually put things into this ignore bucket and you will be left with risks that are unknown to the organization because you have not clearly communicated what the overarching risk appetite is. So if you're gonna look at any of the controls within the identify space, obviously identification, asset management is key if you don't have a discussion with senior leadership and those who are making the decisions around the business and who can make decisions around risk, 
then you're ultimately going to fail because you will not adopt or implement any of these acceptable means to address risk, and you will continually put things into the ignore bucket and hope for the best. And within risk management, that is not an acceptable uh, means. It's not a strategic play. It doesn't work out tactically. Um, so if you can uh, establish this and have this simple discussion around what is it that we are willing to lose, what are the risks that we are willing to take, and then start building your decisions off of that, you can then articulate your company's ability to meet this control because you have prioritized the mission, the objectives and activities, and that flows right into your risk appetite and risk tolerance.